Kalk, the professors from the course. This, this course is part of the FK conference we, we had on Monday and Tuesday. And today and tomorrow, we're going to have the courses on the integrated reservoir and production systems management. So I wish you all a, a very nice course. Thank you very much for the professor, for Surani, for helping organizing that, Beatrice as well, and Ekinor, Unicamp, and Fapesco. So, Fapesco, uh, Barty, the word is yours to start. Thank you. I think Professor Bonvart is on mute. I don't know if they had any problems in the in the room there. Bonvart, are you there? Hey. We bet. Oh, okay. Okay. Um so let me, first of all, tell you a few words about this short course. The idea is to walk in the direction of uh, having an integrated model uh, involving the reservoir, uh, uh, subsea, flow assurance, and topside uh, contributions. Uh, in the form of uh, models and correlations, all that integrating them into a single uh, platform to uh, allow an integrated analysis of the system and uh, allow also optimization of the resources of, of production. So uh, today we will start uh, with a general introduction of uh, uh, the integrated production model, modeling, and uh, uh, also the presentation of eCalc by Equinor in the second part of this uh, in this morning. Uh, in the afternoon, we're going to have a presentation of an integrated reservoir and production model. This is for the program for today, and tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., we will have the presentation of case studies on drainage and injection using eCalc. And in the afternoon tomorrow, uh, uh, the production under CO2 emission constraints. For those uh, participants who wish uh, a certificate from EPIC for, for participating uh, in this uh, short course, and also for the regular students of the postgraduate program in science and petroleum engineering. Uh, we will have a third uh, session on the 23rd November, next week also, uh, where students will develop uh, uh, a project, a little uh, application of the, the models and the equations uh, and eCalc to, uh, um, to, uh, uh, to, to integrate the, the, the tools that will be presented uh, today and tomorrow into uh, an application, okay, a case study. And uh, the students uh, will have to, uh, interested in having the certificate, will have to deliver a management report summarizing the objective, motivation, methodologies, results, and conclusions. All this uh, only next week for those who need or wish a certificate. So uh, let's move to the lecture, the first lecture of today. Uh, I would like, uh, I'm glad to introduce uh, the lecture uh, the speaker today, uh, João Carlos von Hohendorf Filho. João has a 
degree in civil engineering from the Federal University of Santa Catarina in 2001. He obtained the master's degree and PhD degree from the State University of Campinas in petroleum science and engineering. He worked at Petrobras and he is currently a research at the State University of Campinas in the area of integration between reservoir and production systems. So I'll ask uh, David record the, uh, the session. Okay. I'll so recording. Okay. So João, the word is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Bombard, for the introduction. Uh, morning for everyone. I will start to, to talk about this lecture uh, related to our continuing study about integrated reserve and production systems. I will share my screen with just a moment. Um, Okay. Is my presentation okay for you? Yeah, John. Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay, let's talk in this uh, uh, lecture number five. We are continuing to talk about topside facilities. Um, Professor Valdir uh, show us um, certain details about top sides in the last lecture but today we will talk about um the physics a little of the physics behind top sides let's talk about equations we are need to consider we are um, developing integrated reserve production model okay uh, how is the proposal of this lecture uh, first, present topside facilities concepts that are uh, important for us to understand the problem. Review some balance equations. Build a mathematical model to represent a topside model. Um, what is important for us in this course is um, evaluate the question about greenhouse gas emissions so we pre i will present some approach engineering approach to calculate these emissions and solving some numerical examples um so let's talk about top sides uh, in terms of definition um what is a surface or top side facility uh, data uh, facilities to fluid separation, processing, and storage. This picture is a, a, a surface facility, it's a FPSO from uh, Petrobras Field in Brazil. And we are, what is, what we are evaluating? This part in red, in, sorry, in yellow here, that are a lot of equipments related just just for oil water and gas separation processing storage reinjection so we are trying to to describe the physics behind this equipment okay that is important uh, of course there's a lot of other um equipments related to to the living part of the the, the crew we have a part related to electric control for us what is important focus in separation processing storage is related um, generally don't talk about storage but is a point that is important to consider too but for us the most important is focus in receive and separate with safety 
the different phase of mixtures from what okay that is our first um, goal in terms of surface facilities oil is treated okay and processed to center refineries um, natural gas can be used for energy generator in generation in gas turbines feeding system for injection in wells or we can send these separate gas for processing plants for sale water is recycled for injection in wells or after treatment disposing in maybe in the sea or um, other places um, that is the, the main um, um, idea behind the surface facilities from the oil and gas industry but i want to call your attention because surface facilities defines the production injection processing capacities okay because we will see along with this lecture we can we need to define this processing capacities because it is related to equipment that are installed in the facilities we try to understand how how to calculate it how to evaluate the amount and what is important to consider in terms of uh, energy questions pow um, power in terms of demand and capacities um, so surface facilities are composed by basic components okay if we can talk in terms of uh, your not in terms of complexity I, uh, complexity I will show some questions about it but what uh, what components we have inside inside these surface facilities we have separators gas compressors water injection pumps or there we have, can be oil, uh, oil pumps for uh, offloading pipelines and uh, turbines or diesel generators flares coolers and heaters filters shocks and so we have a lot of equipment here inside the surface uh, in this lecture we'll select the first um, that are important to consider when in terms of uh, energy evaluation for our platform okay but we have a lot of other uh, equipments you we need to consider we are design uh, a surface facility it's not the the scope of our uh, class uh, it's more related from the processing engineering but for us what is important to make to to verify and to <clears throat> recognize the main components for um, the production from the oil gas and the water processing um it is a general scheme of uh, fpo uh, facilities um we have um a ship okay is a generally is a, a generally in, especially in brazil we have used uh, oil tankers structure okay because it's, it's prepared to to storage oil uh, inside the hole but how is the idea we have inside the the platform we have some specific models some areas as prepared to some specific um uh, some specific <coughs> uh, task inside the facility for example we have the separation and stabilization uh area so models that when the wells uh, when receive the fluids that are coming from are flowing from the wells and to separate and stabil stabilize oil water and gas we have some area to gas processing we have area for gas compressing. Uh, we have the flare system 
we are talking about this equipment. We have living quarters and control during the, the final of the platform. We have water injection, a great part of our platform. We have uh, uh, electrical power generation, you are talking about, and other parts gen uh, generally related to utilities. Uh, and you can verify that it's a huge uh, space in high, inside the uh, FPSO. Uh, top sides is like a, a plant, okay, a, a great plant for processing the fluids. Of course, depending on the, 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 the size of the platform, depends on the amount of the, uh, the, the, the fluid that are being processed, depends on the type of the ship, okay? But uh, the main idea is to process, uh, to processing the uh, oil, gas, and water, we need to have this these uh, models inside the platform okay uh, of course this is related from um, offshore production from onshore production we we have um, a similar uh, arrangement of components okay uh, and but for us, what is important to, ver um, to verify the specific part of each uh, plant and your correlation with our production. If you verify um, uh, the process, uh, a scheme of a uh, processing plant, it is interesting to understand the way when the fluids uh, fall, uh, fall inside the, comp the, the platform. For example, it is two um, processing plants from pressal fields in Brazil. It's not so different from other uh, plants uh, along the world. But what is important to consider is, is, is is similar uh, with a uh, few differences uh, between the processing plants. We start with the wells that producing three phases from the field. We reach the equipment for our uh, separation. Let's put a pointer here. Here we have three-phase separation, okay? We have some equipments I will show for you in the next slides. The oil are separated, have uh, received a uh, treatment to remove uh, impurities or to remove um, part of water, okay? that are not uh, uh, totally separated in the separators and we have some uh, final oil treatment after these uh, eval um, operations and the oil is uh, sent to a tank and offloaded. The water are separated, we need to a very uh, rigorous treatment um, in, in the kind of um, result fields the, the the companies are uh, discharges of water to the sea so we need to follow some regulation from the the Brazil, Brazilian government um, in terms of uh, gas we, the gas are separated, are sent to compression, to compressors, to be, um, to, reach, to, to be sent for uh, equipment, so data trade, 
the gas to do the dew point control. In the case of petrol, um, we can send to our uh, equipment to CO2 separation of pressure fields, and we can send this CO2 for our other compressor and in, uh, inject it in, in this gas directly to the reservoirs. Okay, that's the idea to send the gas, the CO2 that is separated, send again to the reservoir. And the gas resulted in a high, um, the, the gas, the, uh, the rich gas can be exported by passing for compressor to a gas export line, or can be used to lift the gas, or use as a fuel for uh, electric generation. Okay. Uh, here we have a more detail. I don't know to, like, to, spend much time to explain it because because we need to we will describe the, the, uh, if uh, more details in the next slides but it's the same idea we have received the production separate water to pro, to treatment we separate oil to be offloaded and separate gas to treated compressed some part of gas you uh, use it as a fuel from electrical energy uh, and generation we have part of gas can be rejected part can be sent to a, a gas line and part again can be used to gas lift Um, here is a, the, the same process plan, but it's a bit more detail. Again, I, I will talk with um, explain um, the idea behind each equipment, but it's the same uh, propose. Okay. What is interesting to note here and we have some uh, equipment that appears uh, more than once in these uh, layouts. For example, I have a lot of separators. I have a lot of compressors. Um, here, I don't have pump for water, but how is the idea? Depending on the the pressure gain i need to 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 move the to the the fluids inside this plant i need to consider one or more um, to to give this pressure gain okay uh, i will talk about but what is important sometimes i need one more uh, equipment and i can use this for example this kind of in series compression compression or i can send some parallel compression or the same idea from the pumps uh, depends how i want to handle with the fluids Okay, how amount of uh, pressure I want to to um, prove it to this fluid uh, depends uh, the amount of fluid that I have to to handle depends. Uh, of course, this affects my power. Uh, um, is how is the power demand I used to to consider? This kind of study is related to the, the process engineering, okay? Because I have some questions related to thermal uh, aspects of fluid. Um, we, when you will evolve and do some evaluations with a calc, we will see some aspects 
related from these uh, uh, these details. Okay, I want to talk for you the general aspects behind which of these equipments. Um, when we talk about petroleum primary processing, that is the, the first step, is related from the oil, gas, and water separation. But for us, what is important um, first is consider the oil separation because it's the the, the, the main fluid we are uh, evaluating. Um, we have this, uh, various stages for separation of oil, water, and gas, because we want to maximize the oil recovery. Because if you remember, when we uh, reach some uh, pressure and temperature, uh, we have some uh, uh, phase formation. Okay, we, we talked in the last classes. So, how is the idea? We need to verify the uh, idle number of separation steps that maximize my rate, my oil and gas ratio. Okay, because we, in the first stage, we separate oil and gas but so in a high pressure and we send these fluids for a, 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 a other separator but a lower pressure and so we try to separate in steps maximizing the oil recovery um, and we have the, the, the collection of these fluids from well, the, from wonder we separate from in Asian in, 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 in other and other. So, trying to maximize the oil recover. Okay, and we, after this point, we separate the fluids. Okay, um, from the the other streams. That's the idea. We have some physics inside these equipments. Uh, one of these physics we are talking is related from the the thermodynamics of the fluids. So, what is important to define how is the, the, the pressure and the temperature inside each of these equipments? But we can have some intermediate uh, intermediate uh, equipments to change these. Uh, uh, physical parameters. For example, we generally have, uh, use heaters to, um, to increase the temperature of the, these fluids and help the separation okay? from this, uh, inside these primary process processes. From the compressive system, um, remember now we are talking uh, just using compress uh, a gas. Okay, we are in this case in this moment inside the top side we are working just with gas. So, but what is interesting? Um, uh, we can have some small particles of oil in this. Uh, Side this gas phase, so we use some uh, towers to separate this, this um, part of oil. We use some coolers to 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 remove to decrease the temperature from this gas uh, stream. But what is important for us? Generally, we will apply some compression stages. For us, it is important because uh, we receive the entering of this system. We have gas in low pressure, but in the final of this system, 
generally we need to have some amount of gas in high pressure for um, reject for injection for uh, gas exporting for gas lift so we apply some compression system uh, inside this um, pressure system to increase our um, our um, gas internal energy okay uh, to, to increase the, the the pressure of this gas and the, the number of these compressors we need to define but the idea is um, we have uh, uh, this this kind of equipment that is the most important equipment in this system okay and how to pr uh, how to prove the power from this compression we talk a, a bit in the next uh, slides um, we have some kind of compressors so um, we have um, the most uh, common in the, the industry is related to dynamic compressors and positive displacement compressors uh, we can have the re reciproc reciprocating compressors that use like a piston and sealant mechanism we can use the rotary screw compressors that employ interlocking helico screws to compress the gas. We have the vent compressors. That's the same idea. We have the centrifugal compressors using rota rotating spellers to impart velocity to the gas. Axial compressors that use a series of rotating and stationary blades to compress gears. Diagonal compressors, that is a combination of these two uh, kind of compressors. And hybrid compressors that use uh, the idea of behind this kind of compressors. I will send a, uh, this is the two main Compressors viewed in the oil and gas industry is a rotary screw compressor that use this kind of uh, design to to compress the fluid behind uh, along this section, and we can have the centrifugal compressors. We have some. Uh, it's, it's very similar like a, 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 a ESP pumps, okay? You have some propellers that uh, increase the velocity of the gas. Uh, and these are converted to the power, uh, sorry, from the, the, the pressure of the gas, okay? But that is the idea behind the, the compressors. We have the water injection system. Um, from oil, uh, from some oil movement in the platform, for example, uh, for offloading, it's the similar idea. But um, what is interesting water for injection in, in our uh, case? Um, we use water. For secondary recovery of wells, enhancing natural surge of the, the, the field. That is a very good uh, recovery method for our, um, oil recovery. And, it is, and this methodology is applied in offshore, offshore fields along, uh, around the world. Um, but we what is important to consider in terms of this water? Uh, what is important in terms of uh, the environment? Um, the water for injection needs to be similar 
in terms of characteristics, uh, chemical characteristics, um, uh, and others that needs to be very similar from formation water, needs to be compatible with reservoir rock, because depending um, of, of solid is uh, uh, presented in in this water, we have we can have some chemical interactions with the reservoir rock. So, what's the idea? We need to minimize this kind of interaction. Okay, so that is the point. We need to have need to have similar characteristics. Uh, one point that is important to consider is um, system from injection in platforms needs to consider injection uh, some forecast for injection plus a certain percentage without reserve this is a number from Petrobras because this kind of uh, system especially in platforms don't have the the idea from storage we collected water from the sea, okay, do the treatment and already injecting the, the, the reservoir. So we don't have the idea of, to have the, the storage of these fluids or sometimes we need, we have some uh, problems related to platform shutdowns or well shutdowns and we have some problems in the platform and to recover and the question the recover the the, the pressure was be, behind the injection uh, stop we need to consider and uh, the capacity to inject more uh, water uh, to to recover these defenses okay and but then finally the, this water needs to receive a treatment because again we can have some uh interaction with the the reservoir rock and this kind of uh, interaction can generate plugging of pores of reservoir rock if this water um, as the presence of solid material, we need to remove it. This plugging can be irreversible, so it is a very complicated situation from the, the uh, recovery uh, process. But generally, it's possible to obtain the irreversibility of this. Um, this, this uh, method uh, using some as the ad, ad, uh, addition or some fracture but it is a, a, a costly process okay so the idea is try to avoid this uh, plugging the reserve and of course we have problems in terms of corrosion of the equipments uh, and in uh, of course, of the chemical we can use in this uh, equipment. So the idea is to avoid this kind because we need to change this part of the system and it's, it's sometimes complicated to do. This is an, uh, the idea of a water injection process, it's a normal scheme. We have some uh, water, seawater collection, part of, of, of the uh, seawater, okay? We apply some filters to remove uh, uh, big particles of this fluid. We have some pumps to send the fluid from uh, treatment unity 
have to receive some um, uh, more specific treatment to remove uh, so um, some uh, small solids and other uh, elements. And in the final, we remove the oxygen from this water and send from the main pumping system to send this from the reserve. Okay, it's not complicated scheme. Okay, but the idea is what is important for us. We have energy consumers that are related from these pumps. Okay, that is the most important part for us. Okay, and similar that the compressor, the size of these pumps or the capacity of these pumps uh, will define the capacity of our platform. Okay, because these are the, the most complicated equipment inside the uh, platform. And it's complicated to change along the life cycle of a, a field. So the, this, the, the decision to apply some size of these pumps and compressors and separators will uh, we define our capacity to, uh, uh, to processing, to three grass or fluids. Okay, that is the, the, the main idea you have in your mind uh, in terms of these uh, equipments. That's some, uh, uh, some uh, pictures in term, uh, related format injection pumps, okay? Uh, in the petroleum industry, mainly uh, we have used the centrifugal pumps for bursting, for buster is the first pumps and from the main pumping okay we have some uh, impellers that um, promote the pressure gain from the fluid okay uh, and these can be a single stage uh, something like that or multiple stages when we have a lot uh, more Propellers, or even we can have modern, uh, more pumps to raise the pressure gain from the water system. And what is important for us uh, is related from the power generation. Okay, um, in offshore fields, it is, is very common to use uh, inside the, 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 the platform some power generation system to provide the pump uh, to the uh, sorry to provide power from the platform okay we can use aero uh, derivative gas turbines or we can use diesel generators to convert um in the first uh, uh, fuel or gas or liquid fuel to en to electrical energy that we use in the compressor or we use in the, the, the pumps or for other equipment um, or even you can uh, couple this kind of equipment directly for a compressor energy the, the the cinetic energy to move to move the compression okay but how is the idea we have some turbine connected from uh, electrical generation uh, alternate uh, current uh, generator and using the, the producer gas, we can and generate power from the, the, the platform, okay? Um, 
from from diesel generators we generally use from the start the the start of the platform when we don't have gas but it's or for uh, emergencies but generally we use the gas turbine for to generate because it's a very efficient uh, system to to rate power in the platform okay i can uh, do a bit stop here i think someone give me this question uh, because we start to talk um, in terms of problem uh, are you returned from the the meeting oh it's just someone went to someone have a question anyone hi john i have can i make my question over yes. mike so uh my question is related to uh parallel or i forgot the name where when uh, sequential uh pumps so uh the sequential pump would be used for uh depending on the efficiency of uh each individual pump for instance to avoid using a, a massive pump or or not and in parallel uh could it be used as a an insurance to guarantee that uh we have like a second option if the the first one fails or is there any other option uh that would as uh think on uh, making parallel approach thank you gonzalo it's a very good question um let me to to continue my presentation because i think i i can show i will show the equations and okay. I, I i think it can be very clear to answer your question okay but it's a very good question thank you for for that okay thank you um but i will return from the presentation because i started to to base uh to present the base problem and we can uh, verify this kind of question from uh, like consultants have done um uh, the, the, our students remember this base problem. We, ha uh, we have a reservoir. Uh, the reservoir, I want to use a one producer well, okay? But I have to consider uh, one injector well, okay? We are using the water injection. Uh, or uh, improved uh, recovery method, okay? I think the students calculate the amount of pressure that I need to to, to, to come to. Oh, I think the, the, the exercise, the, the, the challenges are finished, okay? <laughs> but what is important now? What we will define the separator, the water pump capacity, capacities, and we can define how is the energy supply we need to to work with this uh, kind of uh, system. Okay, and we can uh, in, in, in this kind of problem, we can apply an uh, electric submersible pump here if it's necessary. I don't know. The students need to to answer for for us. But we can apply a pump here, and we need to consider his capacity. Sorry, its capacity here, and how is the power demanding? from the platform here okay that's all your problem 
Remember, we defined the already the behavior of the reservoir. We have the equations from the reservoir equation. We have the, the equations to describe the flow inside the, the oil producer. We can use this similar approach to calculate the water injection well, uh, pressure demand. So now we will verify the questions related to water pump, ESP, and the separate. Okay. And we can apply a choke here if you need to control the 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 pressure different from these elements okay that is our base problem uh we have we don't include the compression here um, but is is a similar approach that we are used to calculate the water pumping capacity okay Again, we use basic concepts and tools. Use balance equation, relate to mass, mechanical energy, thermal energy. We have some constitutive relations for phase behavior. We use equation of state from the fluids, uh, hydrocarbon and fluids, and from and for wa uh, water and so, depending on the case. You use thermophysical properties from the fluids and efficiency. We, verif we will verify that for us. Now efficiency is important to consider. Uh, let's talk a bit about uh, the facilities models. The, the, the number one is the separator model. Um, um, let's consider a, a, a biphasic separator model. Okay. Um, if I have, for example, consider a separator like that. Okay, a vertical separator. I receiving uh, oil, gas, water. I want to separate gas from the liquid. What you need to consider? Um, we have two forces behind this. Um, behind this, the, 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 the physics of this equipment. One is the drag force that related from the force that um, that imposed by the gas okay, on the liquid droplet. Okay, this is a drag force. And the other is the gravity force that, is, that are the Graphical force that applied inside the droplet. Okay, we have these two. So, how, how is the idea to separate these fluids? I need to to guarantee okay, to to define the limit of of these forces are the same. So, I consider the drag force are the same than the gravity force. Okay, is my limit for when a, a, a liquid droplet will be um, be seen, uh, uh, stop it doing the flow, the, the the gas flowing versus the gravity force. I combine these two equations and obtain that the the the, the maximum. Uh, gas velocity of this fluid, the, these, the, oh, sorry, the maximum velocity of the gas from, to, 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 to equalize these equations is, is, the, is obtained by this equation. Okay. But it's some, Okay, it's not complicated equation because it's related from uh, so it's a semi-complicated equation because it correlates the diameter of the liquid droplet, the, the drag 
coefficient and the difference of uh, densities. Okay. Um, if we uh, know the pressure and the temperature of the separator, we have the densities. It's, it's not complicated to obtain. But mm, the diameter of the liquid droplet like force is, a, is more complicated to obtain because we have uh, can have a lot of uh, droplet uh, diameters uh, depends of course of the how the fluids entering the, the, the system. So what the, the what we have used inside um, the, the technical recommendations, we use a parameter key S when you join all these terms in, 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 a, in a term, in a unique term that can be measured in in the the lab okay and the the manufacturers of this kind of equipment have the measurements of this this parameter here okay but what is important to understand we need have uh, two main aspects related for this kind of uh, model one is related from the fluid the, the fluid phase behavior okay in terms of density that is not complicated to, to calculate we have the uh, the idea of the li the liquid droplet that are uh, operating behind two forces Red force and gravitational force, okay. And this parameter we can be evaluated by the the manufacturers of this kind of equipment. Of course, if you have these these parameters, I can calculate how is the the maximum uh, gas velocity and how we can use this parameter. In terms of the size of the equipment, the main uh, important uh, parameter is related from the diameter of the, the vessel, uh, of this vessel, that we, we separate the gas and liquid, okay? Because remember, I have a velocity that are flowing along this equipment. I want to verify how is the maximum I define the maximum gas velocity, so I need to verify how is the minimum diameter from the, the separator, okay? So I can apply this equation that correlates the gas flow rate and actual pressure and temperature in flowing condition. Okay? It's not that the flow inside the vessel and at the gas flow cross section of area inside the the separator in terms of the vertical is is a hundred percent okay it's a total area so using this uh, equation i can define the minimum uh, diameter from this vertical separator from the reason those separators are similar okay but for us what is important to understand uh, I have uh, this. I can think about on the opposite side. Uh, depending on the diameter I have for my equipment, I define how is the max gas flow rate I can separate from this equipment. Okay, um, but this gas flow rate is related from the oil producer. Okay? Remember, I am 
separating all fluids in, in oil, uh, liquid and gas. So this we define how is the, the maximum gas I can produce. And it's, it's correlated. How is the maximum oil rate I can produce from my field? So this is the importance of the, the decision of the size of this equipment. Okay, and the the one way I can change it is changing the all flowing condition, the pressure and temperature of this equation, this equipment. It's possible to do in the platforms, but it's, we have some small range to, to consider it. Okay, but it can, uh, if I change the, 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 the pressure of this equipment, I change the pressure uh, from the wells, uh, it, 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 the pressure on the platform if you remember we apply some pressure in the outlet of the oil producer it's correlated with the the, the separated pressure okay so let's talk a bit about the compression model um for gas compression uh, some assumptions can be uh, adopted um because remember we don't compressing we are compressing a a, um, a fluid uh, it's different from water because water we can consider that is compressible okay so the idea is just to is how you don't change uh, you just change the pressure, but for the gas, in the case of gas, we change just the pressure and change the volume, and the, the, we can change the pre the temperature because it's comp it's a compressible fluid. So we can assume a different uh, process for compression. We can use a isentropic compression, is a adiabatic process, where, where no heat is added or removed for a system. Okay, um, it's not um, is not common. We generally verify a polytropic process because we have changes in the gas characteristics and can receive. Um, you can change the, uh, the the temperature of the system. You can change the heat of the and. But what is important here? Uh, the dy dynamic natural gas compressors typically flow a polytropic process. Okay. Um, so if you change pressure you change the volume and it affects to the temperature of the gas okay that is the, the, the important point behind this we receive some some gas and some temperature and pressure outlet of the compressor after this process we change the pressure and if we've change the, the, the volume and change the temperature. The relationship behind the, the, the relationship of changing, we call it polytropic exponent. And um, it is experimentally determined from a given compressor. It's a, it's a manufacturer parameter. Okay, this uh, number is um, depend on the characteristics of the compressor, but it will correlate. Uh, we use to calculate the rates along along the the, the, the compressor system. Uh, we 
and the difference of pressure and temperature. It's an important number to, to have in mind. Okay. With that number, we can calculate the polytropic head. That is the phase of the gas energy between the input of the output of the compression. Let's correlate that polytropic number, uh, temperature of the, 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 inlet, the input of the system, the molecular weight of the gas, the difference of pressure in the, in, in the output, and uh, and with this we can calculate increase in the, that increase. What is important to, to verify here? What is what affects this number? Of course, the polytopic number, the temperature of the input of the system. So. Uh, what is interesting to consider um, in terms of temperature, how the, the head is related from the power required from the system, what is interesting to, cons to, to, to verify? I want to, to operate with lower temperatures. That's the idea. If you verify some diagram of the gas compression system, we verify some coolers along the system because to compress the gas is interesting to, to remove the temperature, to, to reduce the temperature, to reduce the polytropic head. But what, what another point that is interesting, remember that the, that is a relation between the temperature and the pressure. So if I increase uh, a certain um, okay, amount of pressure, I have a similar effect in terms of temperature and sometimes complicated because it, it turned a very high temperature inside the platform. So especially for compressor, we had we have some rule of thumb numbers from this relationship. Uh, when uh, in the last in the next um, lecture we talk a bit about this number, okay, to avoid high temperatures in the platform, uh, we can calculate a polytropic efficient efficiency from this uh, process depends on the head capacity ratio on the fluid and the manufacturer data that is related from the poly the, the, the polytropic uh, parameter okay we and with these two parameters the poly polytropic head and efficient i can calculate the power required from the compressor. That is one interesting um, question for us because we want to, it's a simple <laughs> in terms of uh, parameter, but what is important here? Again, I want to calculate, I want to impose the increase of the gas energy that is related from the pressure but I, ca I consider the, the mass rate of the fluid. So again, this, this uh, it correlates with the efficiency of the, 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 the compressor and the power required. So uh, generally from the reserve engineering, we are, we are focused in terms of the rate, the gas rate I can um, uh, produce in my field because I have some equipment of so long. But for us, what is important, the capacity of the equipment 
and the power required from this equipment. Because sometimes I have a lot of mass, gas, gas mass to, to, to handle, but I don't have power to, to work with this gas. Okay? So, using these equations, I can calculate uh, the power needs to operate this compression, but I can define how is the, uh, the amount of gas uh, I can uh, operate with this equipment. For example, what is important? Here I have um, a compressor performance map is from the manufacturer and is is, is a, a common number, a, a common uh, chart from different equipments. That's correlated the polytropic head, the inlet flow from the compressor, and how is a, 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 a rotary equipment depending on the of this rotation, I can change the polytropic head from my system. Okay? But it is a, we have some questions related from the compression systems. Uh, one aspect that is important is uh, I need some amount of gas, amount of gas inside this equipment because uh, if I touch some uh, some inlet flow inside my compressor, I can uh, verify surge, okay? and the compressor cannot operate. Uh, what is important here? I, it's operate for us like a limit from operation on the system. Um, and I need to apply some equipment um, that uh, implement an anti surge control from the system. Okay? That is, is just a gas recycling system. Okay? If I, I am operating a certain amount of gas and I, I, I am producing less gas along the time, and if I touch this limit, the idea is we need to include an system that um, allows a loop of gas from this equipment, avoiding the surge phenomenon. Okay? And from the other side, I can have uh, um, a lot of gas. We have a different problem, but is the idea here is to to limit the capacity of the oil producer. Okay, um, what is possible to do with compressors? Um, if you remember of the equations, uh, if I want to operate with more gas, and I have some limitation here. The idea is to apply a parallel compressor, other compressor. Okay, that's the idea. We can use a different amount of compressors to handle this amount of gas. Because remember, I have some limitations to operate. Um, but if I want to increase the, 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 the power ratio of the compressors, what I can do, I can apply compression uh, compression in series it's like the first um, this is one I can apply different stages of compression compression okay it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a series compression I compress one stage in, uh, increasing the output, I cool the gas, remove part of uh, liquid half, and I 
compress again to to increase the the pressure rate again okay and i generally i have two three depending on the the, the amount of gas and uh, pressure gain i want to impose okay and again if i have uh, a certain amount of gas a high amount of gas i can uh, use uh, parallel uh, uh, parallel uh, gas trains to 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 handle with this high amount of gas um a question is the, is it similar from the pump water pumps okay depending on the amount of gas or amount of water i can operate with uh, pumps in parallel or pumps in series okay and the question of gonzalo is how is the best um, of course depends okay depends because depends first of the amount of gas i have Let's say we return here, or depends of the amount of gas of the oil I have. Depends of the efficiency of the system, because sometimes uh, we will verify uh, in the the last uh, lecture. Um, generally, in the lower. Um, rates we have lower uh chances so sometimes we need to verify what is more important and of course depend how i generate the the the, the power of from a system and this kind of evaluation is the idea behind um uh, simulators uh, that are proposing to evaluate this kind of problem always the best arrangement in, in terms of pumping or compression it is other in interesting point behind uh, uh upside facility especially from fpso this is the gas balance in the processing plant generally the gas balance is related with this equation. When the produced gas, and not only the produced gas from the reservoir, but from the whole whole system, is related, is equal to the rejection gas flow rate, the fuel consumption from an uh, uh, electrical exported gas, gas flow rate for artificial lift, and lost gas uh, mainly for flaring okay in the system so we need to consider this bad in the gas balance inside the your uh, upside uh, to go because this number generally is related from the compression okay or in, in certain uh, part of your system, we can remove a part of this uh, element. For example, fuel. Sometimes we, we are consuming fuel for to compress this system, part of this gas. Uh, it's an important point in terms of reserve simulation because the the the, the, the actual reserve simulators don't consider this kind of gas balance okay just consider the gas um, uh, are flowing from the reservoir don't uh, evaluate on other uh, questions related to gas well, for example gas used for lifting uh, artificial lifting it's example the pump model is the i think that is more common for you because um, generally we have some knowledge about pumps we have the same idea in terms of head 
But in your case, we have we are how we are using incompressible liquid pressure gain. The equation is more simple. Okay, it's iterated from the difference of pressure, the the liquid density. Okay, to calculate that hand and new and the, the calculation of power are this, is similar that for compression we use the head the head the mass rate but for us in terms of pumping we have efficiency uh, an important point in terms of hydraulic efficiency of course we have mechanical efficiency we have electrical efficiency But for us, what is in, in, important in terms of pumps? Generally, the manufacturers give us a pump chart okay, that correlates the rate of the fluid, the head that this pump can uh, give us, and the feature of this pump. And what I can uh, uh, show uh, your attention, we have the best efficient point. That's the best point for operate this pump. But how is this kind of equipment can be uh, uh, operated in terms of different rates, depending how is that the, the, the water injection need? We, we can operate in different rates. Uh, first idea is the efficient changes if i change my height my the flip rate and my head changed too so i need to to verify how is is my rate range and my head range i can operate my system because idea is if I want to calculate some amount of energy, some oh, sorry, some amount of pressure of an energy to to operate my system, I need to verify if my pump is able to operate my uh, this amount of fluid. And as I commented uh, already, if I need more uh, power. Uh, sorry, more uh, amount of water to inject, I can apply more pumps operating in parallel, or if I want more power, uh, sorry, more head, I want to, I can include it more pumps in series. And the, the definition of this arrangement, again, depends if I have power to, to do it, and I, I want to, to to minimize this effort. Okay, I want to verify the best arrangement, minimizing the, the efficiency. Oh, sorry, maximize the efficiency of my system, minimizing the the power demand. Uh, uh, for um, pump models, I I have some operational range. Outside this uh, area, I can I have some uh, op uh, operational problems. I can have, for example, high vibration of my system. Uh, I can have uh, temperature uh, variations. So the idea is to follow the manufacturer data. And operate my system inside this this range. And if I want to change my uh, my head, uh, similar that we applied it in the compressors, I can change the the rotation of my system. I can change the this this curve here, or the, the head curve. Of course, the pain of my, my, how is the capacity of my, my, enjoy my, 
how I can change this this rotation depends of the the, the electrical motors and I am applying to and that are coupled with this pump. But the idea is when I am using the this this kind of equations I need to verify uh, how I can operate uh, uh, the end of my manufacturing data. Uh, the last uh, equipment I I will talk with you is the turbine model. Generally, in the uh, offshore platforms, we have used this kind of equipment to as a source of energy. But not just for electrical energy, but I can use this turbine for mechanical uh, energy, thermal energy, or let, and so and, uh, electrical energy too. Because the idea I can connect, for example, I can, as I showed for you, I can connect this turbine from a, a electrical generator, but I can connect this turbine for a, a gas compressor system. Uh, generate a tur uh, turbo compressor system and I can use the thermal the uh, the thermal energy uh, from the exhaust gas to heat for example the oil from the my platform so the idea I can use uh, this equipment to as a source of energy um, for us, okay, it's a, it's a very sophisticated equipment. Uh, for us, what is important? Um, um, the, 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 the manufacturers uh, s um, have the, the data from this equipment, okay? But what is more important for us? One depend on the, the power that this turbine can generate it for us. Okay, of the power I, I I want to because I can change the velocity of this this turbine. Okay, and it affects direct um, directly the power that this equipment can generate for us. What is important? What is, is important for us the fuel consumption of this equipment because with this uh, f consumption I can calculate how is the gas fuel I I I am using in in this in this gas balance okay so how to calculate it, it depends of the efficiency of this equipment that is a uh, manufacturer data. Okay, uh, depends on the lower heating value of the full gas. Okay, it's depend on or the gas we are producing. And we have the air temperature influence. Uh, depends on the, 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 the climate uh conditions of my system but generally what is more important for us is the low heat value and the efficiency of my system to to allow us to calculate the amount of fuel i need to use for my system okay um i finished the models it's, a, it's the main uh, models we need to use to calculate the my production system okay in terms of power demand capacity of uh, separation compression uh, pumping and now we uh, just to talk a bit about uh, 
one aspect that we are becoming more important in last years is related to greenhouse gas emissions. That is, uh, is a, a brief introduction for you from the, the next lecture. To the petroleum industry, uh, the petroleum industry has uh, their green uh, home gas account and important evidence that is focused especially in on these operations. Okay, it, it, it's um, it's a not new. Um, Dance from the company, but it's, it's becoming more, it's, it's gaining importance in the last years. Members companies of American Petroleum Institute published the companion of greenhouse gas emission estimation methodologies for the oil and gas industry, known as API companion methodology, which was adopted by oil and gas company to estimate their greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it's a work that is being uh, is have done, and we have some reports and methodologies uh, published in this calculation. We will discuss a bit uh, uh, what is behind these these uh, guides. If you have a more uh, interesting about these these values, you can uh, look behind this uh, uh, API company met uh, methodology, and we can get it in the internet, okay? Uh, the idea is the emission estimation guide uh, provides for us four approaches. One is publishing emission factors. Is, um, is if you don't have any uh, any data you can use, these factors. You can use equipment manufacturers emission factors. Uh, we will focus in engineering calculations to, to try to understand what's happening behind this, uh, behind these estimations. And you can monitor uh, do some monitoring over a range of conditions and derive an emission factors if you uh, inside the industry can do it. Okay, but for us we will focus in engineering calculations. But what is important to verify? For a conventional exploration production, uh, the field study identify uh, greenhouse emissions uh, mainly from full combustion comes from gas turbine compressions, gas turbine generator, uh, turbo compressors, diesel power generator, and diesel engines, okay? Um, talk a bit about this uh, in the, the previous slides. But the um, we have the demand in for compressors, we have demand for pumps. They are the most the most demanding equipments inside the platform. Uh, and you have another equipment that needs um, electrical power. Okay. Um, other uh, greenhouse uh, green, uh, greenhouse gas emissions come from flaring and venting of gas that occurs normal and emission simulate, simulations when the pressures must be relieved from process vessels equipment in order to avoid an unsafe condition or catastrophic failure. Um, I, I came from Unica today and we have in a near city a, a refinery of Paulinia and the flares today is it's very beautiful. <laughs> There's a, it's a great flame uh, in the flare of Pauline. There's someone uh, it's happening in the in the refinery. But the idea is the flare is a, a, a 
a safety equipment from uh, the this kind of process, the the plants, even in the, in the top side um, facility. And uh, some uh, questions related to pressure uh, to, uh, to avoid uh, accidents. But the venting of gas is, is one thing interesting because uh, even if you separated the, the gas from the oil along the top sides, the, the, when you store the oil inside the platform, you can have, again, some venting of gas from the platform on the, the, the storage tanks, okay? It's, it's a bit difficult to calculate, but it's, we have, even after uh, the separation, we have this kind of phenomenon, okay? And of course, we have some fugitive emission, because we have some equipment leaks, okay? And we have some small parts of uh, gas uh, uh, leaking from valves, flange seals, and some related equipment. Okay, what is the the, the basic uh, GAG uh, emissions? So um, the API. Um, Guides uh, for and uh, apply some some approaches. I told you the most important, uh, the, the most interesting for us is related to material balance. Okay, that are related from the gas fuel combustion. Okay, and of course the cleaning of the the gas we are uh, producing can have different emissions from your system um, of course depend of um, the, the, your, the kind of your fluids the, uh, the composition of your gas uh, depends on uh, the efficiency of this combustion sometimes you don't have the, the complete uh, combustion you can and uh, evaluated it depending on your uh, equipment da uh, data. Um, but for us, how is the most important mission? Uh, is, is CO2, okay? Um, because for uh, complete combustion, is the most important. Is the support uh, uh, emission for us? So you can use the material balance to calculate how is the emission of CO two, and you can correlate and using um, the molecular weight of the fuel gas, and we calculate the weight the uh, weight percentage of atom carbon in the gas fuel for each hydrocarbonate component of my fluid of my gas i will calculate the weight of carbon atom carbon and i can calculate the weight of the atom carbon from the the gas fuel in the total gas fuel Okay, uh, this is a stichometric calculation. It's not complicated to to understand, but the idea is calculate how carbon I have in my my fuel, and using this this number, I can calculate how is the amount of gas uh, uh, CO2 gas I am obtaining after the complete combustion. This chemical reaction of combustion. Okay, using this equation, I can calculate the theoretical okay the emission I have from my system. If I have, I can use the same idea from, or from, for example, methane. 
because uh, or other components, but depends uh, if I assume the complete combustion or not, depend of the, the comp components of my ga natural gas. But for us, the most important is rate from CO2. Okay, I, I finished my lecture now. I have my questions related to the American Petroleum Institute campaign from Greenhouse Gas. We have the references to Spain. And from the students, uh, we, will change, we will give you the challenge. Okay, it's very simple challenge for you. But I will um, uh, I will uh, send for you the presentation. Okay. I will stop here and now to my presentation. I have some time for questions. And again, if you have some questions after, please send me a mail, okay? Okay, uh, João, thank you for your presentation, for your lecture. Uh, I invite the participants to formulate questions, uh, either by raising uh, your hands or by using the, the chat. Uh, some questions I could answer directly to the, the students. Can you see the chat, uh, João? We have a question here. Okay, I am, I am seeing the, the, the chat. I am seeing the Haila Nawaz questions. I think the, uh, he answered the... the your, uh, uh, Professor Bavat answered the question, but if he has more questions, you can uh, ask me later. Uh, uh, Joao, and please, the equation he is referring to, the pump power equation doesn't seem to be correct. If Q is the, no, Q, uh, in that equation, Q, Q is the volume flow rate, not mass. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, then I would have the, if, if, Using the equations in the slide, H would be in meters, right? In height. So I should have the gravity and the density. I, I, it's, 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 H is in meters. Is, uh, is the, the, the head of the pump is usually expressed in meters. It, it's so, important, uh, Professor, it's important point. It's important yeah. point yeah. because um, um, when you talk about uh, hydraulic, okay, and generally you can you can explain it in terms of uh, meters. It's a it's a length uh, unit, okay, because. Generally, we'll talk about water pump is you can correlate with um, the, the, the measurement in terms of water uh, water uh, column, okay? It's, it's more uh, easier to understand. Uh, when you talk, uh, when you verify the, 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 the pump power equation, uh, if you if you verify in the internet or in the, the books, we need to take account the question of the gravity. Okay, is is important point. And sometimes the questions don't uh, 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 they don't um, uh, show the the gravity uh, the the gravity in, in the, the questions. 
For some others, you verify the gravity. So what is important to take account? I will verify, Matos, if it's correct for us, but always verify the, if I will apply equations, verify how is the unit. If I consider mass flow, or I consider liquid flow, uh, it's important to verify if I consider the gravity. It's important, the disappointment from Matheus. Uh, I will check in the, the, the presentation how is the correct form. But always verify, because if you uh, forget the, the gravity, your counts don't... Uh, uh, you have some unities confusion. You verify you don't have the, 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 the right answer. Okay? Because the pump... Yes. Yes, that's the idea. It's a unit consistence. Okay? Um, I will check and send for... Yes. Um, but always verify, okay? Um, for compressors, if you verify it, sometimes you don't use a different unit. You have uh, a head in terms of uh, kilojoule, uh, joule per kilogram, or, or, or positive, I, I don't remember now. So always verify if you are using the, the right units and the right um, consideration about the gravity, okay? But I verify for the students, I verify if the, the, the mass flow is okay. But if you verify along the, 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 the internet, especially you verify differences, it means, oh, it's what is right, okay? It's important to consider the, gra the gravity in your uh, equation. Uh, in terms of Gonzalo question, I, I think I could uh, I, I could answer the question. Uh, in terms of how to define how is the best arrangement, uh, the next presentation will will show how to obtain it. Okay. Uh, more, uh, one more. Uh, any more question? Again, I, I thank you for your uh, attending. Uh, if you have some more questions, you can um, ask me after, okay? Oh, uh, uh, Hila Nawaz is formulating a question. Um, go ahead, Hila, uh, if you want to... Uh, to talk aloud. Uh, <coughs> gravity should be multiplied. Okay. Okay, I will verify it. I, yeah. I think it, I will verify it and uh, uh, included in the presentation because it's, it's an important point yeah. okay um, especially if you will recover some internet material sometimes not clear but i appreciate the Ayla uh, and mateus uh, signing about okay so just one thing to uh, i would like to add is that the pump manufacturers usually express their, their, the head of their pumps uh, for a certain number of stages and in meters or feet. And then to get the pressure gain, you have to multiply those, uh, those, uh, Values, so the head value, you have to multiply by g the gravity acceleration, and also by the density of the yeah 
Yeah, that's what uh, Avila says. He multiplied the, the head in meters or feet by the gravity acceleration and the density of the fluid and specific mass of the fluid. Yes, I am Rahila, and that's yeah. true. What you are saying, we have to multiply it with the gravity and density, then the units are consistent. I want to 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 um, to to complement Professor Bombard uh, about this because we we had a discussion about this because sometimes the dense the, the viscosity could be changed. And sometimes it's a bit complicated to work with this, but special form is a, a, a ESP pumps. Um, if you are talking about the density, yeah, it varies. We normally generalize it with the average number. But in terms of viscosity. Uh, no, not viscosity. I was talking about density. Okay, okay, yeah. but. But I talked with Professor Bavart uh, about, um, especially we are operating with uh, high viscosity oils. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we are we start to increase the water cut mm -hmm. from the wells. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good discussion. It's it's a good discussion for our students. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, I did internship at NORS, Norwegian Research Center, where I calculated pump power calculation for seawater injection. And there was a, you know, the density difference and we take the normal generalized average density. And we did, and I, I had the same discussion with my mentor over there. <laughs> so uh, the head is in meter and everything. And I did all the homework and came up with the reference of a fluid mechanics book. And it, it ends up uh, like that, that units are consistent with multiplying gravity and density. Okay, Al, yeah. thank you very much. It's, it's a very point to... to... Yeah. Well, at mine when they're talking with pumps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I think uh, we we finished this first part. Uh, we now go to uh, uh, break, and then we come back at ten twenty for the eCalc presentation by uh, Equinor. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back in 20 minutes approximately. That's wrong. At 10. No, that's wrong. You can say it's that. wrong. Uh, correct one. Yeah, that. we'll be back in, in uh, 23 minutes. <laughs> okay. See you. Thank you. <clears throat>